welcome to Bubbles Travelling Yarns. Um, it is Saturday, only one week late from my original scheduled podcast date. But I thought, um, better late than absolutely never, which is actually what was going to happen. <laughs> so, um, first of all, I just want to welcome you, welcome you to the channel. Thank you so much for subscribing. Um, if this is your first time to the channel, um, my name is Grace and I live in Ireland. I live in the west of Ireland and I'm addicted to learning how to make things. Uh, crafting, that's uh, my jam. I love finding out how to do things. Currently, I'm in a season of my life where <clears throat> it's a lot of cooking <laughs> and not so much fibre, but I do want to show you what I have been making over the last two weeks. Um, it doesn't include spinning. I'm going to start adding to spinning right now because I don't have much knitting. But also I thought it might be nice to like spin by the fire, a bit autumn-y, you know, gives it kind of a vibe. So I'm while I'm going to be talking, I'm going to be spinning this Yarnadelic uh, John Arben fibre uh, called Indigo Dust. And I'm going to be spinning on my Ashford Traveller. This is my little Ashford Traveller. She came back from Australia with me. And you can actually go all the way back to the first podcasts where I, uh, I found her. And I got her from a podcast viewer, actually. Um, oh, I've managed to mess this up. Um, Jocelyn. She sent me, she contacted me when I was in Australia and um, asked if I fancied buying her weave, which was so generous. And uh, I brought it all the way back to Ireland with me. So that's a fun little journey. So how have I been getting on? First little chats. So I've been quite busy. So my... Little baby's been quite sick with teething. I have a 15, 16 month old. I can't get over how fast she's growing. It's crazy. Ooh, same color as my top. Nice. Um, this is the B shirt. It's kind of like a breastfeeding top. It's beautiful, beautiful quality. Really nice. And I'm spinning in my kitchen, dining room, in Limerick, the Limerick countryside. And um, the weather is supposed to be quite nice. It's October currently, October, the start of October. And we are only like 20 something days away from the festival. So myself and my friend uh, Sophie from Shunnick Yarns are running a yarn festival in the West of Ireland. And it is so exciting. Um, so we have everything organized, we have all of our vendors set up and we have the space, we have the food which I'm really excited about and uh, I actually just got the um, leaflets. So this is the festival, very excited. So tomorrow I'm going to be in town for knit, knit kind of a, I have a, uh, every two weeks we go knitting inside in Limerick City on a Sunday and uh, Sunday morning if anyone wants to join us it's on meetup.com and uh, I'm going to drop these around Limerick into different shops and places like that and uh, yeah it's going to be so exciting so we've got about 15 16 vendors and they are going to be selling a variety of yarn fiber and patterns some bag makers as well got some really interesting other kind of crafts as well there's um tough to, um, what's it called rug hooking it's not rug hooking it's punch needling sorry punch needling and uh no it's very exciting very exciting i went down there a few weekends ago and i went down also to try out sophie's new um sophie's husband well they're they're both um restaurant they have a new restaurant so sophie's husband is a fabulous chef and um, it's called the Homestead Cottage in Doolin. Absolutely incredible. If you're coming to the West, go, it's amazing. It's 
full hand grown. She's a, she's a natural dyer, so that would give you an idea about the quality of the food that she's um, that they're sourcing as a family. They're sourcing locally grown local meats, local fish. Oh, it's just amazing, and the quality is like they've actually been recommended by the Michelin Guide. I'm so proud of them and it's in the most absolutely gorgeous um old irish cottage and it's just been renovated to the be a beautiful standard hello jam one of my cats has come in poor jam lost his leg there a few months ago trap or something or a car i don't know but yeah so that's what's been going on um I'm back to work full time, actually more than full time because I'm also doing overtime. So this is the first weekend that I've not been working a shift, <sighs> which has been very tiring, but I'm very glad now to have this weekend off. Makes you really appreciate your time, my time. And uh, I'm really getting, we're really getting into a pattern of our life now where the weekends are spent James does a lot of minding of our baby. She's not really a baby anymore, but anyway. And I do a lot of cooking. So I cook for the week. And then during the week then, I have her every night. Um, so he gets to connect with her at the weekends. And I get to have a little bit of time to myself, which is beautiful. So he takes her swimming on Saturdays. I think he's gonna watch the football this evening. and. Um, mind her while I start my preparation for cooking. Um, <clears throat> seeing as it's coming up to October, I've started to kind of realise that I love hosting. <laughs> I mean, it's not a shock. I've hosted retreats in the past, I've hosted the festival. So I have a kind of a mum group situation, which is fabulous. It kind of came out of um, an amazing yoga group that I was part of when I was pregnant. And um, so, the, uh, so yeah, basically I'm organizing a Halloween baby party. <laughs> so my mind is on like decorations and little feasts and, and James is like so into Christmas that it's kind of disgusting. Like, you know, outrageous tacky Christmas, not like a classy Christmas. I like a classy Christmas, but yeah. So I've decided as of the last week to really get into a Halloween because it's the last bastion of normality and sanity to keep Christmas out of the summer. It is like, I'm like, I'm holding that door. <laughs> so I've decided to throw myself into it. And I'm gonna show you some of the decorations uh, that I've been working on. <laughs> so first things first, I'm gonna show you what I've been working on, the only knitted project I've been working on. And it is um, my little baby's little cobweb jumper it's so cute we were talking about it last week and the fact that i couldn't find a pattern for it like i couldn't find a pattern for this exact jumper so i just had to make it up i did buy this is the this is based on strain tin can knit strange brew design oh my god it looks fabulous from this from the picture oh i'm on the sleeves i finished off the body i did a little rib and then i decided i had loads of white left so i just did a um uh, an I-cord bind off. I'm kind of a bit annoyed that I did the rib first. I should have just done the I-cord bind off, but it's happened. So I'm really running out of time in which to actually put this on my baby. So, but I'm sure I can put it on for like November as well, right? Anyway, so I've made it kind of a, I've made the, the one to two year size. So hopefully it might fit her next year as well. We'll see, she's a giant. She's actually a giant child. So, I mean, it's not shocking. Both me and James are, I'm almost six foot and James is six foot seven, eight. So, you know, like she's gonna be large. She's gonna be a tall girl. So I'm just doing the sleeves. Now, last time I got, I ran out of time doing this and I made a St. Patrick's Day jumper and I didn't do any sleeves. I just made a short sleeve. I do want to do sleeves though, because it is an autumn jumper. So I just have to get at it. Now I'm wondering, am I just slowing myself down by doing two at a time? Maybe I should just get nine inch needles and go round and round and round. But also the last time I tried nine inch needles, I got tendonitis. So I'm trying not to get that obviously. Um, so 
We've also changed around the, I'm getting a little bit less knitting time. Before I was able to knit because James was dropping me into work. So I was able to knit on the drive. So it, it was, I was getting an hour knitting time every day because it's a half hour in, half hour out. But now we have, uh, James is working from home. So I am, um, uh, and we also are borrowing my mum's car. So there's like an extra car. So I'm driving myself to work basically. So I've exchanged knitting for audiobooks and <laughs> yeah, so I'm not getting much knitting done. I'm knitting in the evenings, but in the evenings I'm actually wrecked because I, we've all just been so sick for like months. My cough is only now starting to clear up, which is good. So I did, did go through a um, period of steroids, but they weren't really making me feel any better. And I think it just needed time to work through my system. So I was just concerned because it was a cough for like six weeks straight. So, but I'm fine, I'm getting better. So that's fantastic. So the yarn is a absolutely stunning DK from New Zealand, actually. Lammermore Station for, and it's for Briar Patch Yarns in New Zealand. I don't even know if they're still existing because this was years and years ago I bought this the mill was actually in um they were having problems and they were trying to sell off the yarn to try and save the mill so I bought like 200 euros worth like and it's still going this yarn is absolutely gorgeous this is DK hang on 100% super soft merino wool and it is super soft it's so bouncy it has a beautiful bounce DK A ply wool, pure and natural. And it is so gorgeous. So I got this gorgeous brown and the white. Um, and I'm so upset that I didn't get more. <laughs> I must have a look and see online. Um, oh, actually, a friend of mine is going to New Zealand. Hmm. Anyway, um, I'm sure I could just buy it and get them to ship it if they're still in action. Actually, I must have a look and see. But um, yeah, so this is the pattern. Now the back is where all the mistakes were made, but I do really like the pattern. Um, like I said, there was a pattern very similar to this. It was Andy Satterland cobweb or something, or arachnid, arachna, arachnia or something like that, but it wasn't available on, on Etsy. So I think, I don't know whether she's re redesigning them or whether she'd sold that design to someone else. I'm not sure. So I couldn't buy it. So I kind of had to make it up. Um, so yeah. Yes. So I'm sorry, Andy. I really would have liked to buy it, to buy it, to buy it but I also needed it immediately, obviously the way it is you know how it is so yeah I am delighted I think this this marker was where I was the last time so I managed to it's not too bad in two in two weeks full-time work and a baby and doing all the cooking at the weekends but you know I'm doing it I'm loving the cooking though I'm loving it my uh, my mom is away my mom and dad are away in Spain so I'm in charge of their garden and their chickens so I have like an unlimited amount of eggs and an unlimited amount of um, tomatoes and uh, cucumbers so and loads of herbs so I made a beautiful a quiche with loads of veg and um, I made uh, tabbouleh which is coriander parsley coriander parsley cucumber tomato lime juice and lemon juice and then some couscous through it and it was just delicious delicious so yeah, I've really been enjoying like cooking good food, but we're kind of coming into cozy season. So I'm starting to move on to um, like sort of uh, shepherd's pies and things that you can like literally chuck in the oven and let roast, you know, so I'd make it up. I cook the I cook all the separate bits and then I would tell James to throw it in the oven when I'm on the way home. Um, so this is another. Um, yarn that I got. This is my re most recent stash enhancement, if you can call it that. It's Aldi. It's cheap and cheerful, but it's just the most gorgeous, chunky color. It's like a mustard. It's so pretty. So I picked it up. I'm going to make a hat out of it probably at some point. I need to invest in bigger needles because I need faster knitting is what I need. That's my life now. I need faster and faster things or even crochet. I could crochet. I could learn how to crochet. Crochet is faster than knitting. Mm, I need to be a bit more time efficient is what I need. Um, 
So that is kind of what's going on. Oh, I wanted to show you. So I have a couple of ideas for my little baby party, but the first one is obviously decoration. I have to decorate. So I want to make a, um, a like a Halloween wreath like I did for the Christmas wreaths, which is I uh, cut down a load of dogwood last year, which is that beautiful red um, dogwood. But I also have like elder, long elder branches, which are quite quippy. So I think I'm going to soak them and just turn it into uh, something. I've seen some really cool versions of wreaths, uh, but I think I might just do, the yeah, you know, stick a few flowers, stick a few leaves and, you know, standard and um we'll see what we get um i also have been <laughs> uh, i've been cutting up bats little white bats so in our front room we have a really deep dark blue wall and i was thinking of sticking these little paper little bats on the wall like up over the fire i think that'd be really cute as well just with like blue tack or something i was gonna spray paint them gold but i think white on blue is quite nice um, I was going to spray, I was going to look for white, for black actually, obviously. So I might look for some black card and just do like a, a something across this wall here behind the kitchen. And uh, yeah, I might do that. I'm out and about tomorrow. So I might pop into an art craft shop and just get a big thing of card. I'm looking for things that are fairly cheap and um, something that I can just recycle, like throw it in the fire or whatever, you know, if I... Uh, once I'm finished, um, I <laughs> look at this. I went to my friend's garden, uh, Milltown Farm. They're based in the um, Valley Simon in Limerick, and this is one of the hats that unfortunately met its maker, met its felted maker. Someone asked me, "Would you ever go into felt?" I was like, "Why would I? Why would I do that to myself? I'm morally against felting. Sorry, not sorry." <laughs> Someone sent us that. It wasn't even me. I didn't even knit that. I didn't felt it either. But they had these absolutely fabulous little, little. I think they're gourds actually. Look at this little knobbly boy. What a knobbly boy. Oh, so cute. And then, oh, I'm sorry, but a little gourd. I don't know how this little dip happens, but it's so cute. Um, Look at him. Look how cute he is. Hang on, let's get the screenshot, baby. With my crappy hair. Oh, look. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's so cute. It's adorable. So I have lots of pumpkin recipes because I also got like a, a beautiful, like sweet meat pumpkin with the gray on the outside and orange on the inside and I also got a big jack-o-lantern pumpkin so that needs to be carved and I want to take out the pulp and uh, do something with that but um, and then we also have pumpkin picking coming up so excited about that we went last year and it was just the cutest little thing I've ever done it's uh, so I just I've, I've turned into it now that's the thing I actually don't like autumn I'm going to say it. I don't like autumn. There's something about, I, my favourite season is spring and summer. And, but I think it's because the climate I live in isn't outrageously oppressive. Um, I think spring is the most beautiful time in Ireland. It is just endless swathes of new, new growth coming in. And oh, it's just so special. And autumn is lovely for about two weeks and then the storms come in. We've had storms and storms and storms and storms and all the leaves get blown down and we have no leaves and it's all just dead and dying. And it's just kind of sad, you know. But I'm thinking if I just commit to liking Halloween, then I might start liking autumn. But there's just something, oh, I don't know, I think I really am affected by the seasons and ah, I find it hard to kind of give in to that sleepy mode. I just have this terrible habit of wanting to be productive all the time, which I know is bad for me. I know it's impossible and I know it sets unrealistic expectations and 
just not reasonable and I'm setting myself up for failure and burnout. So I do have to kind of, I think I just have to learn how to accept the seasons. Um, I have, I, it's, it's actually one of the goals that I set myself, not last year, the year before, um, which, when I, which is when I got pregnant. And it was like, I think, I think I actually have succeeded. I think I have started to live a little bit more by the seasons and to appreciate the time that you have and appreciate the different changes and kind of sinking into them a little bit. So that's what I have to work on for autumn. I, I think there's something about coming to the end of like this super productive, beautiful, fresh um, kind of life and then going into this death period. But it's not really a death, it's like a rest period, which I know, I do know. I think that's why it's just such a short period of time in Ireland. It's, it's not a, it's not like months and months of beautiful leaves. It's two or three weeks and then the storms come in and it's just rain and darkness constantly for five months of the year. And then it comes back into life and freshness in March. And um, yeah. So um, I think we're going to try and do the last cut of the grass for the year, today or tomorrow. And then I would like to get some compost into the garden and plant some garlic. I would love to plant garlic um, for next year and have a look at those sorts of long term gains. And I really want to buy some plant kind of cover, some um, kind of a fabric cover just to kind of keep down the weeds because they are wild, absolutely wild. Because the area that we actually built our garden in was a flower bed and there's a lot of kind of creeping vines in there and it's a bit of a disaster. I'm sure look, we can keep trying. I'm half thinking about maybe next year, not um, like this time next year, after the gardening season next year, trying to save up for a whole year for a polytunnel. And then just polytunneling over the whole area that we have for gardening and then we can kind of control it a bit more because it just got absolutely drowned with the summer rain this year because we just got two months of solid of rain um and everything just just I feel like it molded away just everything just died um i think we do have a lot of potatoes still in the ground actually so i do want to go in and, and dig them out but um, they'll be fine for a while. And if not, how bad? <laughs> loads of potatoes. Mum, actually, mum and dad still have loads of potatoes down their potty tunnels, so I'll just use them instead. <laughs> They're away until the end of October. They come back actually on the day of the festival, which is the 29th of October. And um, yeah, so I have a whole month of using their produce before they come back and they'll close it down then after that. So I basically got all of their harvest. Sweet. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess I'm wondering how your season is coming along, how your autumn is doing. I know loads of people love autumn because it kind of comes into that cozy moment. Um, I'm really hoping that we get nice weather for the festival. Um, we get sometimes we can actually get quite like this weekend is not, is 20 degrees, like that's outrageously warm for October. Um, James is very upset because he loves autumn and winter. And I'm like, to be honest, I could do with a little bit of cold as well. Something about the cold is quite nice. You can light the fire and stuff, but yeah. See, I'm accepting it, see? <laughs> um, but yeah, so I hope you've had a lovely two weeks and I hope to see you next week as well. I have next weekend off and I will be, that's the daily party, so I probably will be preparing quite a lot. So you'll see what I've made. I have a few ideas for food, uh, which will be quite cute, I think. Um, uh, well, at least I've been looking up on Instagram anyway, cute ideas for Halloween baby food, toddler food. <laughs> so, not that she's eating anything at the minute. Do you know what I learned the other day? That, um, Babies, when they reach a toddler stage, when they start being on the move, there's something about 
being at that age, like there's something very kind of primal about it, but they stop eating. And I think it's something to do with their, they would be first venturing outside the cave and it's to stop them eating poisonous berries and stuff like outside the cave. And I'm like, that makes me feel better <laughs> because you won't eat anything, but sure, look, that's toddlers. And I think it's a normal thing. And if I just keep offering everything and can you do? So I'll just keep giving her things and then she can be like, um, are you sure this isn't poisonous? This water doesn't look very sanitary. <laughs> oh my but she's happy and healthy and well, so life. So I hope you're getting on well. I'll stop saying that and I'm going to sign off, even though this is a very short podcast, but I hope you've enjoyed it. A little chat, a little show of my projects and a little discussion about fall and, Hall and autumn and Halloween and I'm very excited.